Let's do it. Greetings. Welcome to Golden Sessions with Doc Peace on KNSJ 89.1 FM radio. I'm Doc Peace, doctor of pharmacy, transformational rhythmic speaker, and empowerment guru. Golden Sessions is a time for us to connect and reset with doses of inspiration to empower confidence and foster global unity. <laughs> Featuring golden starlings from all over the world who are shining their light so bright to ignite our light and remind us all that together we thrive. Today we have a special guest here with us, Mrs. Miss Betsy Finkelhu. Betsy is a beacon of positivity. She's living with intention and kindness as her core values. She's also a personal friend of mine. And as a longtime practitioner of healing arts, primarily in massage therapy and energy healing, she actually lives here local in Encinitas, California. She's a, a virtual Dharma coach, a facilitator of mindset empowerment. She does breath work, meditation, and self-care. And she's here with us, blessing her, blessing us with her light. So welcome, Betsy. Mm, thank you so much, Dark Peace. Feeling that light. So, so bright. So, so grateful oh, to be here. It's beautiful. So very welcome. So tell us, Betsy, what it is that makes you gold? What, does, what it is that makes you a genuine, original, loving dreamer? And how do you share these attributes of yours? Mm, I love that question so much. I actually really have been thinking a lot about that lately, especially in the time that we're in right now around staying inspired. How do we, how do we stay gold yeah. by staying inspired, right? If we're not inspired, then life becomes dull. Life becomes monotonous, right? And that the inspiration is what keeps me living from a place of like seeing the, the magic of life. Yes. And it's important to be able to continue to tend to our own inner environment of inspiration. So not only just seeking inspiration on the outside, but finding things on the inside to really keep that light bright. So like you mentioned in um, my introduction, breath work, meditation, uh, affirmations, dance, movement. And ultimately for me, what's really of high value is being in service. When we are in service to others and when we're in service to the greater good of all, then that's what really lights me up. I feel so connected. I feel so alive. I feel so aligned. I start to see beauty everywhere. And when I, when I feel like my eyes are tracking what's beautiful and witnessing the, the light in other people, then my light gets brighter. Ooh. And so it's, it's a really wonderful practice to continue to fine tune the radar, continue to keep coming back to, to the inspiration that is really facilitating the gold, the light that mm. is, that is what you're speaking to. I love that. I love that. I love what you mentioned about finding that inspiration as well as being of service. Mm. So in what ways in this moment that we're in right now, where we're in a way kind of in our own little isolated bubbles. What are some ways that we can be of service virtually? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a great question. Um, so many different ways. You know, there's a lot of people out there that might feel disconnected. And there's a lot of people out there that might be feeling depressed or, you know, really impacted by the, uh, the intensity of what's been happening this last year in the pandemic. And so I have found that it's ever more important to really um, reach out. Um, it can be a little um, interesting, especially because of uh, making a phone call is not like it used to be, right? Making a phone call back in the day was the only one of the only ways that we could stay connected. Now we can send text and we can send emails and we can have these sort of more more distant type of connection. And sometimes, like if the phone rings and it's it's somebody that you haven't talked to in a really long time, what's going to happen? Usually, you're going to see this phone number show up and be like, "Oh my gosh." Like if you called me, we hadn't talked on the phone before. If you called me and I saw your name pop up, oh, oh my gosh, light, inspiration, joy, 
I would, I would light up. Right. So I, I feel like there's, um, there's something really magical about being in service by just reaching out and extending saying, yes. Hey, I'm right here. Yes. I see you. I, I, how are you? I think that yeah. that is a, the most simple and basic way that that's the first thing that comes to my, my heart and mind when asked that question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, it's so true. What you said, like, seriously, if you were to call me right now, it would be a surprise, but it would also be like a welcome surprise. It's that real connection. It's that real connection that we're, we're seeking. So you're basically putting out and doing that, that same service or that same connection that you're seeking, but you're doing, you're putting it out there. You're, you're putting, you're reaching out your hand. Yeah. Um, and I think that's so very important to really kind of um, touch on that. So right now we're in this space where we're seeking certain things right we're 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 hoping for things to happen we're hoping for opportunities to come but what if we actually made those opportunities happen yes i call that being in co-creation with the universe Mm. Right. It, it's kind of like, you know, this idea of the vision board, right? It's, it's a wonderful practice to create a vision board to help you clarify what it is that you would like to experience in your life. And we can't just sit here and stare at this beautiful pictures all day and wait for, you know, your car to show up or a thousand dollars, thousands of dollars to show up or love. We have to take the action steps in order to be in co-creation with, uh, with the mm. universe. We are powerful creators. Right. I completely agree. Right. Co-creation is key. Like, you mean, like, you mean to tell me that that mansion that I have on my vision board isn't just going to, like, build itself and land in front of my front yard? Is that not, is that how it works? Right. Exactly. (laughs) Maybe, maybe, but the chances are pretty slim. And I, I mean, I find that sometimes even if we get an intuitive pulse to call someone that might pop up in our mind a few different times. I would say almost every single time that I follow that intuitive pulse to reach out and to be in service in that way, that person says, how did you know that I needed, wow. I needed a call? Like wow. this call really helped me. I was in a, in a hard place. How many times that I, I have either called someone or they've called me and been like, wow, it really means so much to me that you reached out to me today. It's, it is yeah. continuing to really build the connectivity because we're so separated in our, um, in our experiences last year, you know, we've had so few hugs, you know, people are feeling maybe not quite as connected. And so the simplicity of sending a message, reaching out, uh, making that phone call, sending a little picture, you know, it really can make someone's day. And and to me, that is being in service and that can help us to stay inspired as well and help others to be inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And speaking of this, this vision board, I don't know if you know, but I have a golden board. I don't, I don't have a vision board up in my room. I have a golden board and it, I put on all the golden attributes that I love about myself, the things that make me a genuine, original, loving dreamer, those things that make me authentically me, those things that I love about myself, the things that I love to do, not just my dreams and my visions, but those things that empower me, empower my confidence to make those dreams a reality. So for those listening, I, I really highly recommend that you put together a golden board. And if you have a vision board already, you can make it gold. You can make it gold by simply putting more of your authenticity and those original characters, the, your golden attributes onto that board so that when you look on it, you feel empowered to get it going. Yes, absolutely. And the way that I do that is a little bit of a different expression um, because I use my journal. So yes, tell us about this journal. So this is so similar. There's different, you know, different spokes to the same center of the wheel, but it's all about self-empowerment, self-inspiration, self-honoring, self-love, self-connection. You know, how do we stay inspired, right? There's so much heaviness in the world that it can be very intense, right? To hold all of that. And so it's really ever more important to continue to polish 
the inside of ourselves, whether that is through putting it up on your wall and reminding yourself of the magic and the light and the love and the gold that you are, or using a journal like this one. Yes. So this, um, this I launched last year after like three years of holding the vision, the power affirmation journal. And it is basically a tool to help people to get into better relationship with their thoughts, get into a practice of writing their affirmations or gratitudes, get into a practice of writing a letter to themselves, writing and empowering questions. It's really about what I like to consider is like pumping our mindset muscle, Ooh. right? We, we go to the gym. Say that again. We're, we're pumping the mindset muscle. You know, it's like gratitude is a muscle. It is, you know, you consider some people are incredibly grateful and they're always saying, oh, I'm so grateful for this, grateful for that. Some people are like, I can't, I can't even access gratitude is too difficult. Well, if you're not practicing it, then it gets atrophied. You know, and so the more that we're writing and can, like trying to um, fine tune our focus and awareness on things like gratitude or these affirmations, mm. it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then we start to just be integrated and embodied as a, a grateful person. Oh my so gosh. it is truly like going to the gym, writing down, getting it out on paper. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I believe I'm capable. I am worthy. I am worthy. You may not believe it at first, but when you start to practice more and more and more, you start to seek the evidence that it's true. And then the universe starts to show, show back to you, right? Wow. Your, your shine, your gold, your light. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Pumping that gratitude muscle, right. being grateful for what we have. There's a, there's a quote that I remember um, being said by Miss Rona Bennett from episode one of uh, Golden Sessions here on KNSJ 89.1. She said, gratitude turns what we have into enough. And I know it's not easy to be grateful in the moment. You touched on that, but it's and the more we work this muscle, this gratitude muscle, the easier it becomes. And so I see you connecting gratitude with affirmations. Can you explain what the differences between those are and how they connect? Absolutely. I love this question so much because we actually do a practice in my virtual group, which is another way that I get to serve um, is using the journal in a virtual platform where we do it together. And one of the practices that we do is we start with gratitude. So writing a gratitude list and getting used to the practice of fine tuning our focus on what it is that we're grateful for. And then going a little bit deeper into maybe why we're grateful for it. And then transforming that gratitude into an affirmation, which essentially is a statement that can declare who we're choosing to be. So uh, for example, I could say, oh, I'm so grateful for this beautiful orchid. You know, okay, that's a good start. That's lovely. I'm so grateful for this beautiful orchid because it brings beauty and in, in life into my, my space. Okay, that's another layer deeper, right? Okay, if I'm going to take that now, turn it into an affirmation to help me remember the truth of who I am and really like fan the flames of who I'm choosing to be is I, I see and create beauty wherever I go. Ooh. I see and create beauty wherever I go. And that's, that's more of like a, a, a mantra, a way to be right. I want to live the beauty way. So I'm going to choose an affirmation that is going to help me remember that on a regular basis. I see and create beauty wherever I go through the oh. reflection of gratitude. Right. So do that with anything. I'm so grateful for my standing desk. I'm grateful for the standing desk because it makes things life easier, right? I'm so I I am a very systematized and organized person, right? Do you see how there's the connection yes. there? So you're Slightly identifying. But it helps you. Okay, um, so you're identifying the characteristics that you appreciate in others, or in in other things, not just in a body or a person. And then you are pulling out the, those golden attributes. What, what about that person or that thing makes it genuine, original, loving, dreamer? What, what is it that you would identify and like about that? Then you embody those characteristics. And then you turn those into an affirmation so that you can embody that even further and strengthen, strengthen yes. that gold within yourself. Yes. Oh uh, I'll give you a wonderful example. I am so grateful for Doc Peace. Okay, this is like just 
baseline, right? I'm so grateful for Doc Peace. I'm so grateful for Doc Peace because she shines so brightly and inspires the world to be a better place. Okay, my affirmation is I attract incredible, bright, vibrant people into my life because I am that too. Mm. Right? You see, like yes, oh, I how see. can how can we really lean into this? Like the world is really reflecting back to us what who we're choosing to be, right? Yes, yes. And so, because you attract the energy that you exude. And I love, I love this conversation that we're having right now. And we're gonna have to take a quick break, but we will be right back to to really dive into the power of affirmation. So Again, you're listening to Golden Sessions with Doc Peace on KNSJ 89.1 FM radio with Miss Betsy Finkel, who we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. So stay tuned. Let's do it. Are you my friend? I'll admit, I'm confused. I used to friend request and now I follow. Am I in this alone? I once thought that birds flew solo, each bird on its own, just feathers and bone relying alone on their wings to soar. Now I see that even though they move independently, they are part of something much greater than what they could be individually. And like a bird, I may sing to my own music and dance to my own drum, but connections ground me, reminding me that I am not alone. My purpose is greater than me, myself, or I. I once believed that whether or not I chose to use my gifts was my prerogative. But does bearing my talents to you or I any good? Part in my mind delay, sometimes I may need to remind my mind what it's capable of, jog myself from doubt to a confident state. See, I am not alone, my friend, and neither are you. I see you. We are in this flock together for the better, and together we thrive. Together we thrive. You're listening to Golden Sessions with Doc Peace on KNSJ 89.1 FM. I'm Doc Peace. And we are here with our guest, Betsy Finkelhu. So let's get back into it. So Betsy, you shared with us the power of gratitude, the power of affirmations. How did you discover this? Mm. Well, uh, you know, I think I started really doing affirmations at a very young age, but not really realizing that they were affirmations. I had um, these moments where I would stand in front of the mirror and I would talk to myself and I would say nice things. Um, mm -hmm. My sisters being older than me, they have like many older siblings had a tendency to, you know, pick on me a little bit. And uh, it was a little, you know, intense sometimes. And so I somehow intuitively went to, into my room by myself and would, you know, say nice things to myself in the mirror. Um, and it really helped me at, at a, you know, preteen, teenage time to give myself those pep talks. And then mm -hmm. later in life, I started learning about affirmations through Louise Hay's work, um, who also her mentor, uh, Florence Scovel Shin, who is, she was one of the pioneers of bringing affirmations out into the world in the 1920s. Um, and so I started learning more about them. And then I started to use them in my journaling practices. Um, really, I had a, a pretty cool experience of really seeing when social media started to become really popular and more integrated into my life, my journaling practice shifted because I had a tendency to write in my journal about the things that I had been doing and celebrating my weekend or the things I was doing. And then 
I started to share that online instead. And my posts were reflective upon my my experience of life. And so then I didn't feel the need to write down as much in my journal about what I was doing. So my journaling started to shift into more affirmations and insights and considerations. Um, I also took some courses in journaling and really started to learn about the value of prompted writing and reflective writing and uh, morning pages and things like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you've made quite a few shifts and I love how you um, you, you took what you were doing, to, you shared your stories on social media, then you're like, okay, now that I'm sharing my stories on social media, I don't need to double share that in my journal. So I'm going to start writing more of what I'm grateful for and my affirmations to really empower me in my journal. And how has doing this helped you thrive? Massively. It's helped me so much. So I would say the number one is helping me to get in touch with what's bothering me, helping me see where I'm stuck, helping me see what are my limiting beliefs, the the nagging thoughts that, you know, keep me playing small or say that I'm not good enough or not worthy or frustrated about life. And then through writing it down and being able to see it on paper, I started to really see that I have an opportunity to change the pattern, to choose something different and to really reflect upon my, my um, empowered choice of thought. And so that's where this, the inspiration for this journal came. You know, I was doing my own writing around reprogramming and using affirmations as a way to get there. And so it was working for me really well. I started to see my life shift in big ways in so many different ways through my relationships, through my work, through my prosperity mindset, um, through my self-love. And so it became very clear that I needed to create a journal for people to have the similar opportunity to transform their own internal dialogue through journaling. Wow. I love it. Love it. And I love how your journey started with when you were young, before you even knew that this was a thing, you were already dialed into it. And it started with you being in the mirror, telling yourself positive things to boost your, your confidence. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine if all teenage girls and boys for, for that matter, these days mm-hmm. were to do that? Mm. It would be so, so, so healthy. That sounds like an exercise that we can actually challenge our listeners to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would love to just presence too, the, to get over the sort of like awkward feelings of doing that or the stigma around that. I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, Saturday Night Live skit where he sits in front of the mirror and he says, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough and doggone it. People like me. (laughs) There's a lot of poking fun at affirmations in the mirror, but it really is a very, very powerful experience when you can really give yourself that permission to look directly into your own eyes and tell yourself Hmm. wonderful, kind, loving things. It's really transformative. I love it. And there's so much power in that because we want that. We want to receive that, right? We, we want to be told that we are gold, that we are, we are special, right? But why not tell yourself that? Right. right. Mm. So often we're so, waiting for that, that uh, reflection from others. Yes. The time is yes right now to give ourselves what we long for. Yes. And it, yes empowers us to own that, own our unique traits and our authenticity, and then acknowledge that in others that makes them special as well. Because when you feel confident inside yourself, you're no longer looking to tear other people down, but rather you're looking to build others up. Yes. And it all begins with that person you you see when you look in the mirror. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Wow. Betsy, you are incredible. I want to know your why. What Mm -hmm. most feels you to continue to shine your light so bright? Oh, I love that so much. I feel so filled up from the people that have 
been in my life that have reflected back to me so much love, so much care, so much kindness, so much generosity. I feel like I have been blessed with an incredible supportive family, supportive community. I feel like every time I receive from my soul sisters, from my real sisters, from the people in my life, I feel so, 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 so filled up. And if I'm feeling that, I want to be able to give that to others as well and help others feel seen, help others feel loved, help feel others um, like to be reminded of their magic, of their light, of their joy, because I've received that incredible feeling of what it feels like to be so fully held, seen, um, celebrated, loved. Mm. It's, It's medicine. It truly oh. is medicine. And I, I, time and time again, I will see other people light up through the reflection, right? It goes right back around to what we were speaking to in the first segment around reaching out and just extending, allowing someone else to feel held, to feel mm-hmm. checked in, um, to, to feel seen. Yes. And honestly, being a doctor of pharmacy by trade, that word medicine, that speaks to me. Yeah. And this is love medicine. It's the best self-medication, love. And can you share with us real briefly, what is this light that you are mentioning? I, I'm throwing around the word light all the time as well, but I would love to get your definition of light, being Mm. light filled, sharing your light. What is this light? Mm, That's a great question. The first uh, thing that comes up is radiance. It's inner, your inner soul's essence right it is when we are connected to our authentic truth it is it is of light you know my my father passed away about five years ago and before he passed for actually quite a few years before he started talking about how we're made of stardust like literally and like scientifically we're made of the same stuff that stars are made of Right. And so I oftentimes think of that as well. Right. It's like we look up into the stars and we see those little sparkling bits of light in this dark sky. And what do they do? They They radiate, they shine. They really bring such a, a presence of joy. Right. When there's a clear sky, what do we do when we see the stars? It's like, oh, oh, it's like, like a breath, Ooh. right? And so it's the same thing when you meet somebody who is like that bright, gold, radiant expression of their true essence. It's like, wow. I just, ah, oh. right? We all, we feel inspired. We feel lifted. We feel mm-hmm. just like, wow, okay. And so, you know, not to discount the darkness at all by any means, because, you know, those stars would not shine if there was not the dark sky for them to be surrounded by, you know, so it is, it is important to honor our own shadow, honor, honor the darkness, right, that we all go through. And when we can lean into it from a place of, and this is my perspective, um, t- of a place of learning and willingness to see what is the what is the growth here? How can I learn from this? How can I lean into this and, and evolve from it? Then there's really some magic that can unfold in our, our evolution. Oh, the light shines in the dark and like it just lights up the sky. And I love that imagery that you just gave to us about these stars just lighting up and shining their light, even despite the darkness. So they're they're making the darkness light filled. And how do you feel, Betsy, that how shining your light has impacted what's going on in the world right now? Mm -hmm. And how would shining our light, sparking that light within us, impact the world in any way? Yeah, I think it it empowers other people. I mean, here's a perfect example. You are shining so bright, girlfriend. What you're doing, what you're bringing through with this radio show, the way that you're creating summits and you're empowering people to share their voices. In this moment, you are sharing your light. You're allowing yourself to shine, putting yourself out there, and you're inviting me to shine. It is like it is permissioning others to really bring through their, their own unique expression. 
It's really powerful. And I feel like we are at a time where we, we get to have a huge breakthrough, especially from my experience as well with women of really cutting down the comparison models, cutting down the competition and really mm. coming back into collaboration and unity and, and supplying each other, uplifting each other, inviting each other to shine. Right. When I, when I let myself shine, it invites other people to step into their own radiance, right? And if it and if it takes anyone into a dark place of comparison or frustration, then my hope and my prayer, and I hope this can be for others listening as well, my hope and prayer is that that trigger takes you into a deeper place of self-reflection and can empower you into your greatest light. It takes mm-hmm. you into the darkness, right? Like the light and the, sh- and the shadow. It is like, it's that's the unity. So, <sighs> Ooh, oh, I love it. I love this well, conversation. Flowing. You're flowing. <laughs> so I good. I get chills. Mm, I love this light you are ad- admitting. You are so bright. And I would love to learn how we can connect with you further and become even more empowered to shine the light within us. Oh, yes. Stay connected. Yes, I'm putting myself out there more and more like I like I had shared the power affirmation journal has launched this last year and it's a foundation for what I'm creating more of this in this next uh, evolution of my expression and my my journey of why Um, so powerafirmation.com is where you can find out more information about the journal about my work about the groups that I lead about my healing work as well Um, definitely working to continue to put myself out there more and you're such an inspiration so here we grow i definitely would love to stay in in touch with anyone that may be listening that might need a spark of inspiration a moment to just feel connected i am so here Mm, i love that i love it i love your light betsy um and i look forward to connecting with you further do you have any last minute words you would like to share with our listeners I know that we had talked before we aired about this opportunity that we are in right now to own our uniqueness and not feel disheartened and intimidated to share our creative light, to share our our creativeness. So can you share with us more about how we can start tapping into our golden light and really own that? and use this opportunity right now to share it with others. Absolutely. Yes, it is the practices. It is continuing to tend to our own inner dialogue, our own um, practices of breath as our technology, right? Um, the meditation to create the space within ourselves to listen, right? To continue to move our bodies, to release any stagnation. Our bodies are incredibly intelligent. So when we can tap into that power, we can really access such deep, deep reservoirs of wisdom and expression and our unique soul's imprint can come through. Uh, And then of course, just uh, like I'll begin and end everything with gratitude. Gratitude, 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 pump that gratitude muscle, keep giving thanks and keep being in your expression of generosity. And on that note, give thanks. All lowercase is a 10% off your power affirmation journal. So anyone that's listening would love to offer that as a gift as well. So thank you so much. You are so very welcome. Here we grow. Here we grow. Love that, Betsy. You are listening to Golden Sessions with Doc Peace on Candice J89.1 FM Radio. That concludes today's session with Miss Betsy Finkel, who thank you for joining us today. Remember, you are gold. We all are. And together we thrive. I'm Doc Peace. Shine on. Let's do it. Are you my friend? I'll admit, I'm confused. I used to friend request and now I follow. Am I in this alone? 
I once thought that birds flew solo, each bird on its own, just feathers and bone relying alone on their wings to soar. Now I see that even though they move independently, they are part of something much greater than what they could be individually. And like a bird, I may sing to my own music and dance to my own drum, but connections ground me, reminding me that I am not alone. My purpose is greater than me, myself, or I. I once believed that whether or not I chose to use my gifts was my prerogative. But does bearing my talents to you or I any good? Part in my mind delay. Sometimes I may need to remind my mind what it's capable of. Jog myself from doubt to a confident state. See, I am not alone, my friend. And neither are you. I see you. We are in this flock together for the better. And together we thrive. Together we thrive.